Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt Marash, and for this 87th episode of Large Format Friday, we're here in my darkroom space where I'm going to make a Kayla-type print. If you've never tried this alternative photographic process before, I encourage you to watch the video in its entirety so you can become familiar with the process, and then once you're ready and you have all the tools, you can follow right along. By the way, since there's a lot of things that we'll need for this process, I'm going to go ahead and start running those along the bottom of your screen. Feel free to pause at any time. Now, you don't necessarily need a darkroom space to make a print like this happen, but it helps if you have a space that doesn't have any blue or UV light coming in, because that's going to fog up our process. This is one that doesn't need to be done completely in the dark, and you can have some nice yellow lights on like I have here. To start, let's talk about the paper we need for this process. I'm using this beautiful sheet of Hanamule Platinum Rag. This is a completely neutral watercolor paper with a really nice smooth finish, also known as a hot press paper. Now this piece is a little bit long for the kind of negatives I'm going to be using today. I previously exposed a 8x10 inch piece of film and developed it out in my staining developer Pyrocat HD. With this, I'm going to use this as a template on my larger piece of paper. When you have a large piece of paper that's extra curly like this, I get to use one of my favorite friends here, my deckled edge ruler. Lay that right across, find it where I like it, hold, and just deckle the heck out of it. To coat our sensitizer onto the paper, we just need a brush. Any brush will do, whether it's a dollar store foam brush, a really big fancy hockey brush. I prefer this little two inch hockey brush. I've been using this for platinum palladium and all sorts of stuff you may have seen on the channel before. I've been soaking it in this distilled water, and you can see it's got a little bit of coloration to it. That's fine. That's metal sensitizer that was on there before. I'm just going to go ahead and slowly drip that off. The water's there, so I don't soak up too much of my metal. This is really important when you're doing an expensive process. Okay, once that's off of there, my hockey brush is, it's damp, but it's not leaving too much water on my hand. That's perfect. Oh, and before I forget, Let's get some gloves on here. Safety first, guys. If you're mixing up these chemicals yourself and they're not pre-mixed, you want to go ahead and make sure you're using gloves, safety goggles, and have proper ventilation. Now with our paper on a nice flat working surface, let's go ahead and mix up some sensitizer. Our sensitizer is what forms our photographic emulsion that sees the ultraviolet light. For this, we're going to need equal parts of ferric oxalate and silver nitrate. For an 8x10 sheet of paper, you need about 18, 19 drops each. 18 if it's an expensive process. So, let's count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There we go. By the way, I love this little Pyrex shot glass. They're excellent. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Once it's all done, just give it a little mix in my Pyrex shot glass. And I'm going to pour this out right into the center. If you want to get fancy, you can mark out the corners of where your 8 by 10 inch negative goes, or whatever size negative works great. You don't have to be a large format shooter to experience the joy of printing. So we're going to go ahead and bring this right down the middle. Now don't let it sit there for too long. You've got to start moving it around. The whole point of the brushing is to keep it spread out nice and even. The flatter your working surface, the better. i got a little bit of arch to my working surface, but I'm not going to let it get me down. Just brush it back and forth. Now I like to make a little square, so I've moved right. Let's move up. You see how the puddle just keeps pushing further and further out. That's what we want it to do. Now don't get too don't get too excited about going all the way to the edge to start. Just gradually bring it over. There you go. And we're bringing it right. See, it's almost already the size rectangle we need it. Bring it back up. There we go. Now some folks don't like to brush this on by hand. They like to use more precise means or they don't want to show the, the 
the painterly part of the process, not me. I'm not that good a painter, but this makes me feel like I can create something. Just keep pulling it down. There we go. I'm gonna go. Oh, we're going back to the left again. There's no right or wrong answer, as long as you're having fun. For me, this is all the fun right here. Just pulling that emulsion up. All right, this time we're gonna go right, right? There we go. And we're starting to lose some of that shine from the emulsion on the paper. This means we're getting drier. We're almost there. Probably got another minute or two. Pull it down. And you can do these brush strokes however you like. You want to crisscross them, you want to show some hatching. It's all good. Some folks like to do a double coat with the Kalotype. They say it gives them a little bit more D-Max or deeper, deeper dark values. I think one coat does just great. There you go. Pull it over. I think this is my last pass. There we go. Bring it down. Oh yeah. There it is. A nice little square here. Give it a few extra big, big brushes at the end. And just fancy it up at the corners. There we go. And there we have one coated sheet. Now we want this to dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. If you do forcibly air dry it, use a hair dryer at the lowest setting and preferably on cool and try not to use it in your hair again. So now that it's been about 15, 20 minutes, our print is nice and dry. It's a good time to inspect it. Make sure there's no little dust specks or anything getting in our way. The cool thing is any little errors we made along the way, they're just going to make the print more and more unique. Just dust off any little bits that might be there. We're going to take our negative, lay that on top of this emulsion side to the emulsion side here. So shiny side up as we talk about here on the channel. Then we're going to flatten this out with a nice piece of glass on top. And then we're going to expose it in the UV unit for about five to six minutes. I'll see you back there. So right after our exposure, there's not much here, but there's a very faint ghost image. And now we're gonna develop this out and really see our calotype come to life. So what's happened is our negative has covered up some areas of our final print and proportional to how much of that silver is on there, it's blocked that much UV light, forming hopefully a positive image once that developer hits. I'm gonna drop it in our tray. And now we're going to add a 20% solution of sodium citrate. This is going to pop the image up within the first 10 to 15 seconds, but we're going to keep developing for about two to three minutes. And that's to make sure some of this excess rinses away. All right, time for the magic. Let's watch what happens. I'm just going to pop it on real quick. Try to get it nice and even. Do you see that? It's coming up. Oh, it's coming up so fast. Exactly what we would like to see. So now the whole goal is to keep our picture moving around. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. And try to remember this brown color that it looks like because this print is going to change tone a few different times throughout this process. We're not even close to done. We're just getting started the washing. Now the sodium citrate is going to pick up a good amount of that color stain from the unused sensitizer and over the course of a few prints you're going to need to start replenishing that. For every 8 to 10 prints you're going to add another 200 mils of your sodium citrate. And remember that's a 20% solution of sodium citrate per volume of water. So I'm going to grab a funnel. And drain her back in. Nice and slow. It's okay if there's a few drips, we're going to replenish this. It's already looking pretty good. Now we're going to get our print rinsing in a, a very small amount of citric acid in water. I didn't have any citric acid today for a 3% solution, so I used acetic acid and I diluted it very, very heavily. This is going to help start to clear out those highlights, but it's also going to change the color of our print. Look at that. Our print has already started to lighten in a lot of areas. 
that deep brown will come back, but right now we're in the clearing phase. You can do a rinse step in between this. Uh, from what I can tell, it's not 100% necessary to do a water rinse, uh, and it adds a risky situation where if that first rinse doesn't have the right acidity to the water, uh, you might actually uh, create some stains in your picture. So I just go right to something a little more acidic. And this first clear in a mildly acidic bath is going to take a couple of minutes. If it takes longer than five or six minutes, though, you may have a paper that just isn't suitable for this process. But if it's a paper that's known for hand coating things like platinum palladium and Van Dyke Brown, you'll be okay. So we know we're done with our clearing bath when our highlights no longer have any of that yellowing going on in them. And I'm just going to rinse my print out in about 30 to 60 seconds more of running water. After that running water rinse, another cool step begins. Remember that brown we had at the very beginning with that developer? We're going to get some of that back. Let's move to the toner step. So when you tone a kalotype print, there are a couple of different ways that we can replace the silver that is now in the paper. That silver can be converted to silver selenide with Kodak Rapid Selenium Toner, we can also replace that silver with platinum and palladium metal salts. Now this kit's quite expensive, and we can also get a different color when we use gold chloride. I don't have any gold chloride on me, and I, I really treasure my platinum and palladium salts, so I'm going to go ahead and go with a more inexpensive option, but one that still makes my print a little bit more archival in Rapid Selenium Toner. I used about 15 mils of rapid selenium toner to one liter of solution. Get another tray here. All right, remember it's it's yellow with a faint bit of brown. And once my selenium toner hits, we're going to get some of that back. Here we go. Look at that. It starts darkening almost right away. And we're just watching it to get darker and darker. There is a point where that tone just gets a little bit too harsh, and everybody has their everybody has their own kind of favorite look with it. I'll let it hang until I start to see it get just a bit warm again. I'm gonna snatch it out. There we go. All that yellow is starting to go away. My highlights look clear. I'm getting this nice, slightly warm brown. I think that's where I want it to be. Yeah, right there. Okay, I'm going to take my selenium toner, put it back into my... And look at that. We have a nicely transformed print, and we still have a few washing baths to go. After a brief rinse following our toner, let's go ahead and fix our image. Now the fixer we're going to use for this, this fixer is a little bit softer than what we would use for normal film and prints. We've got a little bit of sodium theosulfate, some sodium carbonate, and some sodium sulfite in here. Mix up to about a liter. Add that on there, and this is just going to get rid of any other little metals that we don't want in our finished print that, that might affect our archival permanence. If we do see any lightening of the print, that means we must have missed something along our rinses, and that's okay too. After a couple minutes of fix, we'll hit it with a little bit more water, and then we'll use a very simple hypoclearing agent. You don't need to use your normal archival wash or hypoclear, we can just use 5% solution of sodium sulfide. You know, one of my favorite things about the black and white darkroom is you can come in with a bunch of negatives and leave with a bunch of positives. If you have any questions about the large format photographic process or anything to do with cable types like we talked about today, you can feel free to drop those down below in the comments. And for those longer form questions, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by. Happy holidays, 
happy printing, and God bless.